Hello, BookTube. We're going to do another bookshelf tour, but don't let the background get your knickers in a twist because we're not doing penguins. <laughs> Instead, we're doing a bookshelf you can't see in this camera angle. There's a there's a bookshelf in my room, in my little book room, that's one of those things where it's in the corner. <laughs> and the only way that it would not be in the corner is if I had decided to put two bookcases end on end and just have a column of dead space between them in the flush corner of the room. I don't like doing that. I hate that. I would prefer instead to put a bookcase flush with the corner and just run the risk of having, you know, one third of its books be not readily visible or you have to walk over and actually look at the bookshelf. It's not that bad. They're not buried, uh, but they're, they're not. Well, here, let me see if I can show you. This is what we're doing today. In there, <laughs> I don't know if that was if that was quite visible, uh, but we're gonna do uh, no. We're gonna do we're gonna do the first shelf of the corner bookshelf. <laughs> so if that if that wasn't sloppy enough beginning, <laughs> and we're gonna start. We'll start with the first one. We'll do just one shelf today, and then we'll go on. We will get to these penguins. I guarantee it. The rest of you have said in comments and in emails that you are crazy enough to want to do a penguin bookshelf tour. So in 2017, we will do that, even though it's hundreds of books and hundreds of digressions. <laughs> but for now, we'll do this little corner bookshelf. We'll start with this one here. This is Hitch 22, uh, the memoir that Christopher Hitchens wrote uh, and then took on the road. Uh, I didn't think at first that I would like it because I'm, I'm very familiar with his on the road videos and uh, I thought I knew every every word of it, but I don't. It's uh, it's actually, uh, there's actually a lot of stuff he chose not to tell audiences, including my favorite chapter, which is on the working life of a critic, which is, is very good. Uh, name dropping, of course, because Hitchens name drops, is, <laughs> does it all the time, did it like breathing, but uh, really good anyway. And then we have this. This is the paperback of Cosmos by Carl Sagan, the uh, the big illustrated paperback that he did uh, as a companion to his uh, great TV series. And then another companion to a great TV series. This is The Body in Question by Jonathan Miller, which is ju just takes you through the human body, system by system, history by history, and does a wonderful job of it. Uh, I, I think I've recommended on this channel before watching Jonathan Miller's The Body in Question. It's really good uh, and quite funny, of course. And then we have Alive in the Wild. This is just another one of these these large uh, illustrated picture books that I love so much of nature. I, I, I particularly prefer the ones that have artwork instead of uh, photographs. And this one has lovely artwork instead of photographs. Uh, then, speaking of, uh, of uh, my profession, we have uh, Catherine Ann Porter, the great novelist who is now almost entirely forgotten. These are her collected essays uh, in which she writes about uh, this. This is Collected essays is a highfalutin way of saying this is the stuff she did for money. This is the deadline stuff she did, just like I do. And she's fantastic. Oh, my God. She's so good at it. Uh, uh, then we have a history that's near and dear to my heart. This is A Most Fortunate Ship, A History of the USS Constitution, Old Ironsides, who you, if you come to Boston as a visitor, you will not see her. She is in dry dock, doing, undergoing a, an extensive facelift. <laughs> uh, but if you come at any other time, you can, you can take a look at her, even in dry dock, but it's, it, the real experience is to, go, is to go on a full tour. And I don't think that, the, that the, they're doing that at the Constitution Museum uh, while the ship is being worked on. Uh, but... Any, any other time, you owe it to yourself when you come to Boston. It kills me that a lot of tourists come to Boston and don't do, don't take a look at the, at Old Ironsides. Uh, I remember one time I was there. I Old Ironsides and I go way back. <laughs> I have been on her on the open water, which uh, I'd be willing to bet no other booktuber has. Uh, and I remember one time. Uh, <laughs> I remember one time I was there in a crowd. I was just going to pick up my spirits. It wasn't anything special. I was just going to visit and see her. Uh, and I heard two tourists say, uh, yeah, it's, isn't it an incredible replica? <laughs> and I wanted to stop them and say, actually, it's not a replica. The reason why there are so few uh, warships of her age 
that are available to become actual museums is because she sunk most of them. <laughs> this is the real thing. <laughs> uh, then we have uh, Diamonds in the Marsh. Uh, this is about Diamondback Turtles. And uh, it, also, it also doubles. I mean, it's, it's a natural history of them, and it's a great popular natural history of them. But it also doubles as a, as a hymn of praise to marshes which I love. I've tramped over an endless number of marshes. And we have a couple of transverse books here. We'll take care of those. This is Afar, Azar Nafisi, The Republic of Imagination, uh, Life in Books. This is, this is also just uh, essays of his about, uh, for money, about various books and characters. And uh, for some reason this is here. I don't quite know why. <laughs> it's just, this is Two Boys Kissing, a book that I have praised on this channel many times before. Uh, in which the contemporary story of two teenage boys in love is narrated by a chorus of dead AIDS patients, dead gay men who died before they could experience or even dream of such freedoms. Uh, I don't know why it's here. It, should, it shouldn't be. It should be with fiction. Uh, I mean, maybe in this room, definitely, because I liked it a lot. But uh, well, anyway, <laughs> anyway, we got to resist the urge to reorganize while we're touring. <laughs> so I will try to do that. So next we have this. This is uh, My Best Girls by Helen Hokinson of The New Yorker. This is uh, her her collection of cartoons about uh, utterly clueless and adorable, extremely wealthy New York society matrons. <laughs> it's Tough to explain the appeal in words, but they are delightful. They are absolutely delightful. And I am also in a position here in Boston. I know the Boston equivalents of these women. <laughs> they really exist, and uh, they're delightful. <laughs> uh, and we have this I have mentioned. Uh, okay, we're going to clearly need to pull some of these things out so we can get to them at all. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we're going to have to pull. All right, well, it's a learning experience, right? We'll learn as we go along. Uh, we're going to have to pull some of these things out, otherwise I can't even get to the books, because this is a corner bookshelf. Uh, next we have this. This is uh, The English Country House, A Social History. Uh, and it is, it is a, it, I, I have, a, I think I've mentioned on this channel before, I have a sweet tooth for uh, English Country Houses. I've been to many of them, I've visited many of them, I've spent time in many of them, uh, and I love reading about them. And this is, uh, this is not just, uh, country house porn this is a great social study of the role they've played as they evolved over time which is uh fascinating i don't have any place to put these things well we'll it's a learning experience we'll learn as we go along and this is by the same author uh this is the victorian country house this is where he centers just on one time period for english country houses perhaps their greatest time period uh when so much of the work of government was done uh, informally in country houses uh, far away from the glare of politicians. Uh, and then we have a little bit of a theme here. I promise this, this shelf is not meant to be as obsessive as it seems. This is uh, Life in a Shell. This is a, a physiologist's view of turtles. Uh, and it's all about their evolution and the, the energy costs that, that developing a shell uh, represents for them and uh, the benefits. Uh, the benefits of that. Then we have uh, this thing here, just a just an art catalog, just full of uh, nice nice pictures of Sir Thomas Lawrence, who's one of my favorite painters, uh, he, one of my favorite old style English portrait painters. A uh, lot going on in his pictures, and I I don't know why I have this, for instance, as opposed to you know some larger thing that where every all the plates are in color. I I it just I just do. It's just a, a random thing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we're getting to the end here of this shelf and this will be a learning experience we'll learn as we go along how to do this uh, the next one is a kids book that is great it's called It's a Book <laughs> in which a long suffering uh, gorilla must explain that what his book is to his to his hyperactive friend Who's, can, I, can it text? blog? scroll? wifi? tweet? no, it's a book <laughs> It's absolutely delightful. Every book person should have a copy. Uh, then Alan Moorhead's The Blue Nile. We mentioned this this author before uh, in connection with Darwin and the Beagle. This is his classic. The Blue Nile is his classic book that took off for him. And this is a larger illustrated version. These, these larger paperback illustrated versions that I love so much for 
these kinds of weird nonfiction classics. <clears throat> I try to get as many of them as I can. Uh, at the Brattle, of course. <laughs> then uh, just a, a very thin guidebook to the Arnold Arboretum. A gorgeous uh, arboretum that's two minutes from where I live. Uh, where I used to spend a lot of time with the girls. I used to bring the dogs there uh, every day. And we would climb over hill and dale. It's, it, it, you, you take two minutes to get there. You take two minutes on the main path. And then all of a sudden you're in forest. You're in woodland. You're in meadows with streams. You don't have any idea that you're anywhere near a city. Uh, and they used to love it. Just love it. We would come back tired and muddy and just having had a, a wonderful time. Um, it's been it's been one of the one of the attendant melancholies of this year to to realize that they will never see the arboretum again. They'll they'll never they'll never get to look at it, and I'll never be there with them again. That they there's no way they can't make it there. And even if they could, the the, the amount of energy that Lucy would need just to get there is all the energy that she has in any given day. So I would have to carry her back, and she certainly, certainly couldn't walk around there. And my beautiful pointer has no strength in her hind legs. If you have her on on level, solid ground, she's largely okay, unless she has to turn around or, or hurry up. But you put her on broken ground, on earth, with twigs and logs and whatnot, or an incline, falls down and can't get back up again, just looks there, looks at me to pick her up. So she can't do walking on terrain, so neither one of them can do it anymore. So we don't go to the Arboretum. But I have this, this, uh, this thing is full of not only uh, beautiful, high-definition black-and-white photos, but also all the history of the place. Uh, and then there's this. This is the Homeric Hymns uh, in a translation by Apostolos Athanasakis. <laughs> so you ought to know what he's doing. <laughs> uh, it's it's a translation of the Homeric hymns and uh, extensive notes. Uh, and then the last thing on this first bookshelf of the corner bookcase is uh, On the Vineyard. Uh, this thing here. Was, talk about this, these are gorgeous black and white photos by Peter Simon of Martha's Vineyard, uh, which those of you who who aren't familiar with New England topography, there we have, uh, off the coast of Cape Cod, we have two islands. One is, the bigger of the two is Martha's Vineyard that's uh, so close that the ferry trip there will, you scarcely have time uh, to eat a bag of chips before you're, you're, you're there. And then the further one is Nantucket. I, uh, and I love them both. I've spent a long time at both. And, uh, so I, when I saw this for a dollar at the Brattle, I couldn't pass it up because I don't mind uh, beautiful high-definition black-and-white photography. I prefer it to color, usually because the uh, the photographer is more present in the work. Uh, and there you have it. That is the first shelf of the corner bookshelf, <laughs> despite the tantalizing penguins. Uh, and we'll move on to the next shelf in the corner bookshelf next time. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.